I used to work at a Walmart. The Walmart I worked at was open 24 hours back then. Due to my kid's school schedule, I would work overnight shifts so that I would be available to drop him off and pick him up. I would do a 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift every night. During the day, I'd sleep, take care of my son, and work my second job some days. I was exhausted a lot during this time in my life. It wasn't a great time. I had to do what I could to cover rent, though. This Walmart was one of the bigger ones. It was a super center, not just a grocery store, so it had everything. It was one of the few open 24 hours around here. I think COVID changed that, though. When I got there around 10 this one cold night, there was still a decent amount of shoppers in the store. A lot of people would come in for some late night shopping. As the hours would pass, it would of course quiet down tremendously. The late hours of the night would attract a lot of weirder characters, weirder than the usual ones during the day. Into the AM hours of the night, there was only one person working the front of the store, and he or she would be at the self-checkout registers. There were no regular registers open this late. There would also be a couple of stock workers on the floor, which was what I did. Then there would be a couple warehouse workers in the back, who I really didn't ever interact with. They did their own thing. And then there's just the night manager on duty. I was in the cereal aisle doing my usual stock work. I noticed a customer walk past the aisle, then seconds later he stepped back into view at the end of the aisle, stopped, and looked down at me. When I looked back at him, he started looking at the cereal. The guy had curly hair. I couldn't gauge his ethnicity, honestly. He had a black backpack on that looked like it was stuffed to the brim with God knows what. He awkwardly lingers in the cereal aisle for a minute, apparently looking at the granola bars. Then he came a little closer to me and asked me where the bread is. I pointed him in the right direction. He said thanks and slowly walked away out of the aisle. I watched him walk away and he had a very noticeable waddle in his walk. When he was out of sight, he was out of mind though. The problem was that he wasn't out of sight for long. I was in the cereal aisle for quite some time, and I started noticing that every few minutes that guy would slowly pass by the aisle looking down in this direction. He wasn't holding anything. He didn't get any bread. He just had on his big sketchy backpack. I started working faster just so I could finish this aisle and move away from him. When I was done, I brought the empty U-boat platform back to the warehouse, where I grabbed another U-boat full of boxes ready to stock. I purposely picked an aisle far away from the cereal aisle. I was now in the chips aisle. This is also about 45 minutes after initial contact with that guy, so there should have been no way he was still here. But I was wrong. He found me. I was rotating the newer bags of chips behind the older ones on the shelf, and then I looked to my right, and that guy was at the end of the aisle, creeping again. He still had nothing in his hands. This man had been creeping around the store for almost an hour. He then finally approached me as I was dreading he would. I tried to look away until he started to speak. I don't remember word for word what he said, but basically, he said that he's been checking me out and he couldn't resist coming up to me telling me how beautiful I am. I responded as politely as I could. I did a fake little laugh and said, no, thank you, that's very sweet. He didn't stop there though. He asked a bunch of personal questions like where I'm from. I gave fake answers to everything. This guy absolutely reeked and his breath was awful. I was genuinely repulsed. He asked for my number and I said I'm seeing someone. He said there's nothing wrong with us just being friends. To get him to leave me alone, I gave him a fake number. I then told him I really can't be talking to anyone while I'm working. He made some creepy comment before walking away thinking he was all suave that he got my number, when in reality he was genuinely creepy and I gave him a fake number. I thought that would be the end of it. Hours went by and time felt like it was going in reverse. I wanted to go home. Then the only other stock worker on the job at that hour suddenly walkie talkied me saying there's some creepy looking guy asking for me. I said oh no and then told her to tell him I left. I then basically made a beeline for the employee lounge where I planned on hiding for a while. I made it to the lounge and then sat in one of the seats. Then the double doors opened and in came that guy. He looked at me, and he looked angry. He yelled, you gave me a fake number, you bitch. I think I swallowed my gum out of fear. I said, you can't be back here, sir. He then took off his backpack and plopped it on the table next to mine. He started unzipping it as he looked at me. That's when it was time for me to go. 
I got up and ran past him without thinking. He tried to grab my arm, but he failed. As I ran through the store, I looked back and saw he was running after me. I ran to the front of the store and outside to my car. It was the only thing I could think to do in the moment. Alternatively, I could have tried finding the male warehouse workers in the back or even the manager, but that was no guarantee. I got to my car and saw the man leave the Walmart looking for me. He was slow. He must have been on something. He saw my car, but it was too late. I was already driving away. I called the night manager and let him know what just went down and that I'm not comfortable staying there tonight. I also warned him of the man with a backpack full of unknown contents. My manager told me I can't leave the place short-staffed. He said he'd call the police to make sure the man doesn't come back, and he told me to come back. I was adamant about not returning that night, though. He eventually got the message and said he'd review the camera footage, but that I need to come back tomorrow night. And I did. He allegedly notified the police the next day of the man and gave the police department the surveillance footage. I met a lot of characters working that job, but this guy was by far the scariest. I don't know what he was reaching for in his backpack. I don't want to either. I was 14 when this happened. There's a Walmart that's walking distance to my house. I used to sometimes go there to buy clothing and such before I was of driving age, since it was so close. Sometimes I'd go with my friend Emily, sometimes I'd just go alone. The Walmart is part of the nearby mall, but the mall kind of stinks now. Most of the good stores have closed over the years. Plus, I wasn't made of money when I was 14, and Walmart is cheap. One night, I walked to Walmart with my AirPods in. It's a 15-minute walk. When I put my AirPods in, I shut out everything else around me. I feel like most people with basic social awareness know that if someone's wearing headphones, it means they don't want to have to take them out to talk to you. I was minding my business in Walmart in the girls' clothing department when I noticed a guy next to me saying something. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but it looked like he was talking to me. I took out my AirPods, and I said, are you talking to me? He said yes. He was this shorter man with gray hair who looked like 50. He had glasses and a clean-shaven face. He smiled and said, sorry, I didn't see your headphones. Sure he didn't. He said he was just telling me how his daughter buys the same exact kind of jeans I was wearing. I had no idea why he was telling me this, but I'm a very polite person to everybody. I always have been, so I chose to be kind to him by laughing and saying, oh, that's funny. That should have been the end of an interaction that didn't need to happen, but of course, this wouldn't be a story if it was. I was still looking through this rack of tops as the man kept trying to talk to me. He mistook my kindness for actual interest in talking to him clearly. He asked my age, and I said 14, and his response was unsettling. He basically said, oh, what a great age. So mature, but still so young. He asked my name, and for some reason, I actually gave him my real name. And his response to my name was, wow, that's my favorite name for a girl. Next up, he asked what school I went to, and around now was when I decided to start making things up. I said, I'm actually not from around here, I'm just visiting my cousin. He couldn't let it go, though, and he persisted, asking where I'm from. I said I'm from out of state, keeping it vague. But then he said, I've seen you around here before. Are you sure you're not from around here? I looked at him and tried to think of a response, but instead, I ended up turning around and walking away from him. I was for the first time ever actually made very uncomfortable by a stranger. The way he said he'd seen me before made me feel as though he'd been watching me or paid attention to me in this Walmart before. I went to buy the jeans I was holding at the front of the Walmart. Then I walked through the store to enter the mall. It was November or December and they had just put up the Christmas decorations so I wanted to walk through. And I also wanted to see if any new stores opened since my shopping in Walmart was cut short. I walked through the mall with really nothing catching my eye. I went into a Victoria's Secret and while inside of there, I saw through the glass that guy from Walmart sitting on a bench in the mall outside of the Victoria's Secret I left the store and started walking very quickly through the mall. When I turned around and saw he was now walking behind me, I started to panic and called my mom asking her for a ride because I was being followed by a man. I took her advice and waited in a store with multiple people inside. He came to the entrance of the store and he creepily said my name in this way that he clearly didn't want a lot of people to hear him. I started to feel sick. I went to the cashier and said this man is following me. I don't know him. Some customers overheard and looked over, 
and the man clearly noticed and started walking away into the mall. The cashier, who was probably only 20 years old herself, sympathized with me. A couple even came over and said they'd wait with me until my mom got here. My mom came into the mall eventually and I left with her, thanking the couple who waited with me. I didn't go to the mall or that Walmart alone anymore. I didn't even go back with friends for a long time either. I hope that guy got caught being a creep and has been taken off the streets. My worst job ever was working at Walmart. I worked there only for a few months. I hated every minute of it, honestly. I didn't get along with a lot of my coworkers. The customers were crazy and weird, and I felt like a lot of people just generally were unfriendly. I was 24, and Walmart was my second job to make ends meet with my new apartment. Sometimes I'd work register, sometimes I'd work the desk outside the fitting room, and sometimes I'd work general sales associate. On this day, I was a general associate, walking around the place assisting customers and straightening things on the shelves. I interacted with a bunch of people that day. I still remember dealing with some of the dumbest customers I'd ever had the displeasure of interacting with, but nothing could have prepared me for who I was going to run into that day. I got a random pat on the back, and I turned around to see my ex-girlfriend Casey. She looked super happy to see me and went in for a hug. I was surprised because she didn't live anywhere near here. I asked what brought her here, and she said she heard through a mutual friend that I started working here recently. Casey and I did not leave off on good terms at all. She had been harassing me for a while since I had broken up with her, and I had to end up blocking her on everything to get her to stop. She was insanely controlling throughout her relationship, and downright obsessive, bipolar, and paranoid. And after I ended things with her, she wouldn't stop trying to contact me and meet up with me to talk things out, even though we had talked things out multiple times. She even left multiple voicemails crying. I take no joy in any of that. I don't say any of this to belittle her or make a joke of mental illness, but she has issues and I came to learn that, and I had to tell her multiple times her behavior is not normal. Her finding out I got this job and coming to my place of work I was not okay with. Even though I hugged her back and was cordial at first in this interaction, I eventually cut the crap and said, why are you here? The fake friendliness stopped here on both sides. Her face got more serious and she started telling me that it's really messed up that I block her out of my life like this. I told her this is the exact kind of behavior that made me block her. Showing up to my job is not normal. Then I started asking her which mutual friend told her that I worked here. She claimed that's irrelevant and I assured her it most certainly is not irrelevant because I didn't believe that anyone told her where I work. I had broken up with Casey many months ago. She should have had no way of knowing about my new job or apartment, and I was confident none of my friends were even in contact with her anymore. I told her I'm seeing someone else now. I have to get back to work. Please leave and don't contact me again. She refused to leave, so I simply just started walking away to an employee's only area. She didn't follow me back there. It was at this moment I actually started considering trying to get a restraining order. After my shift was over, it had to be like 11pm, closing time. I left the store and went straight home. My roommate was home, his car was in the driveway. I parked next to him and went inside. I went straight to the kitchen to make myself a late dinner as I always would after closing shifts. I microwaved some frozen meal and went to the living room to play video games. For a while, this was my only time to unwind and do what I wanted. I played for maybe an hour then went to bed. I woke up not long after falling asleep. I thought I heard something. I looked up and realized my bedroom door was open. I definitely did not do that. My roommate Paul goes to bed really early because he works early and there's no chance he'd just get up and randomly open my door. I got up and walked out into the living room. I turned on a lamp and looked around the place. I went over to the front door and it was unlocked. What the hell was going on? I was thinking, did Paul leave? I looked out the window and saw that his car was still there. I locked the front door. Then I went to his bedroom door and tried opening it. It was locked. I knocked on the door lightly once, and he didn't respond, so he was asleep. I was genuinely confused. I went out front and looked under the pot where we kept a hidden spare key. It wasn't there. My heart was in my throat at this point. The only person in this world besides Paul and my family who knows that I like to hide a spare key outside is Casey. I checked at least five times under the pot. 
even checking the surrounding area on the chance that maybe it was kicked out of place or something. I went back inside the house and shut the front door. I went to the knife holder in the kitchen, and the biggest knife was missing. My phone was still in my bedroom. I had to be smart about this. I tiptoed to my bedroom door until I was close enough to grab the doorknob as fast as I could and slam it shut from the outside. I screamed as loud as I could for Paul. He erupted from his room, obviously confused, and there were suddenly bangs on the bedroom door from the other side, along with Casey's voice saying, I'm sorry, let's talk. I held the door closed with all my might as she kept trying to pull it open. Paul called the police as I held the door. After a few minutes of this, Casey stopped trying to pull the door open, and she was hysterically crying on the other side of the door. Finally, the police arrived and came inside. I moved away from the door, and the officers made sure Casey dropped the knife before she came out. She was of course arrested, and I didn't even have to press charges. She was charged by the state for, I believe, burglary in the second degree, and she's currently serving a pretty lengthy prison term for this. I'm honestly shocked she didn't get charged for attempted murder. It's a sick situation all around. I don't know when she'll be out. I'll have been long moved out of this place by then. My biggest regret is not catching the red flags with her early on.